Hello, this is from around the world and Kells Academy. My name is Kais and I am 12 years old and I live in Montreal, Canada. Today with my friends from grade six and seven of Kells Academy, we will be interviewing Matt Scott, who is based in Washington, DC in the United States. Matt is the storytelling and engagement manager of Project Drawdown, the world's leading resource and climate change solutions. Matt's work links to several sustainable development goals, especially to goal number 13, climate action. Matt will first introduce himself and his work, and we will then ask him questions about his background, his journey, his skills, and his impact. So just to start out, and thank you for that introduction. It is so great to connect with all of you. And, um, you know, I'm amazed because I live in Washington, D.C., and like I've never been to Montreal. So it's great to be able to connect with all of you. And um, I'm just I'm really looking forward to hearing your questions. Um, but just to start out, my name is Matt Scott. I am a social impact storyteller. And what that really means is that my work really focuses on um, taking like the, the impactful work that people are doing and then humanizing it and making it so that it's more engaging and interesting and understandable so that um, people like all of you could see yourselves in the work and see how you could like make your own difference and make your own impact in the world and at project drawdown i'm really focused on doing that work when it comes to climate solutions so i actually want to start out um, like i start all of my presentations by asking you all a question and um, i think it's a it's a good question for you all to think about quietly um, among yourselves um, as i ask it which is what comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change? Um, and I, I start with this question because this is a question that has been asked to about 14,000 people worldwide. What comes to mind when you think of global warming and climate change? So think about that. Think about what comes to mind. And I imagine there are a lot of things that are coming to mind for you. Um, I know that in asking the question in the past, I've heard, um, actually even earlier this week, I heard from a lot of people who mentioned, you know, being afraid when it comes to climate change and global warming, because a lot of the messaging and stories we hear are scary and it's, it's about fear. It's often about the causes of climate and it could, it could really feel like climate change is this massive problem that we can't do anything about, but the reason that I love my work at Project Drawdown is that it's helped me to see that climate solutions are the thing that we should focus more of our time and energy on. Um, Project Drawdown is actually not my first time focusing on climate solutions. I, I started um, without even really knowing that I was focusing on climate solutions, um, working on this project with NASA, um, called the the nasa international space apps challenge and space apps is a global hackathon event with um with locations all over the world and for those who don't know hackathons are these environments where people come together and um, they just create solutions to the world's problems. There's actually a space apps event in Montreal, if you're all curious and if you look that up. And there are a number throughout Canada. The Canadian Space Agency uh, was involved last year in, in the events that we put on. But um, space apps also was this reminder for me that um, we all could be part of the solution. And if there's one message I want you to take away, it's that regardless of your interests and um, regardless of your skills and talents and what you want to do with your life, if you have any idea um, already what that is, I'll say I, I still don't know really what I want to do with my life. Um, but if, if anything, regardless of what you want to do, I want you to know that you can make an impact when it comes to climate change and global warming. Um, so when we ask this question, oftentimes 44% of people answer thinking about fear and outcomes. Um, they think about all of the bad things that could happen, basically. 18% of people think about those causes of climate change, so fossil fuels burning like coal and oil and natural gas that are polluting the environment. 
Um, but only 3% of people think of climate solutions, which is one reason I'm really excited about my role at Project Drawdown, because it's so important that people realize that it's possible to do something about climate change. It's not a, um, it, it's not something that's, that's just going to happen regardless of what we do. We could take um, really bold, meaningful action to, to make a difference when it comes to climate. And um, I really see the role of stories um, like I did on the Space Apps Challenge as helping people to really see what's possible and see that they can make a difference rather than feeling um, afraid for what's going to happen. So really quickly, I want to just talk through more of what Project Drawdown is, and I have a lot of slides that I'll go through more quickly than my introduction because I want to get to your questions. But like I was saying, it's very easy to feel powerless in the face of global warming and climate change. But at Project Drawdown, we really know and believe that stopping global warming is possible because the solutions exist today. And I'm going to talk with you about a a handful of those solutions, but more broadly about what I mean when I'm talking about climate solutions that um, help us reach drawdown. So you might be wondering, what is this drawdown thing? What's that funny word drawdown? What does that mean? So drawdown, for those that don't know, is this future point in time when basically the greenhouse gases, or in other words, like the gases that trap heat in the in the atmosphere that uh, that fuel global warming, drawdown is the point when those steadily start to go down, so that um, you know our planet stops warming, and so a lot of the negative effects of climate change. Um, start to reverse or start to, to slow down so that we'll have a healthy planet to live in for um, years and years and years and decades and, and who knows, centuries to come. Um, now, when thinking about how we, re how we reach drawdown, um, the, the number one thing I'd point to is this very um, kind of, uh, complicated diagram of different things, but what you're looking at is what we think of as the framework of climate solutions at Project Drawdown. So I show this not so you can memorize it. I still do not have this memorized, um, but I, I say this because um, there are a number of categories for climate solutions that are good to know about. Um, when you think about climate solutions, I think for, for each of us, different things come to mind. Um, you know, a lot of what I think of immediately or what I used to think of when it came to climate solutions were um, electricity and, and like solar panels and solar energy. I live in a, an, an apartment building where we just put solar panels or they just put solar panels on the roof. So I think oftentimes our minds go to the electricity solutions, but there are a wide range of solutions. There are dozens and dozens of uh, climate solutions, nearly 100 um, that are in these different areas. Um, so the different, the nine different categories where there are climate solutions are shifting product, uh, well, it's electricity. So this orange one to start, food, agriculture, and land use, um, industry, transportation, so that's getting around and, and um, uh, electric vehicles and bike, biking around and so on and so forth, um, buildings. Um, and then there are there's other work or other types of solutions that fall into this category of um, helping to like uh, helping to basically remove the, the heat trapping gases and remove a lot of the harmful things in the atmosphere. So land sinks, ocean and coastal sinks, engineered sinks. These, these are all um, a bunch of words that I, I don't think are, are as important as the general idea, which is that climate solutions could be addressed through a wide range of actions. And something that um, one of my teammates at Project Drawdown said the other day is that you know any career um, could be a climate career. Anything that you want to do could be um, something that's considering climate change and keeping that in mind. And I really want you to keep that in mind as you think about 
all that I'm talking about because I'm really not um, asking or encouraging everyone here to go out and uh, become like a, um, a solar panel installer. That's not how I address climate change. I address climate change through storytelling using my skills and passion. And so, you know, maybe there's a skill or a talent or um, something that you're really good at and really passionate about that you could think about, um, how could I make sure that this is more planet friendly and climate friendly? Um, the last thing I'll note here, the last type of solution, which I'll mention when I go through um, just some examples of solutions is that there are health and education um, solutions, solutions that improve society. Um, and I will talk about how those relate to, um, to climate change and climate solutions overall. So again, I won't spend too much time with each of these stories, but I do wanna give you some examples of what climate solutions could look like. So I talked about solar panels, and this is an example of a team in Uganda that's focused on installing solar panels at schools, in medical clinics, at a women's center, and they continue to do this important work. Um, so this is what their work um, addressing climate solutions looks like in, in this one community. Um, another example, um, and this is a picture from, I, I believe it might be um, you know, in uh, Michigan in the, in the US, but I'm not exa exactly sure off the top of my head. Um, this is a picture of what's called a repair cafe. So when it comes to climate, I know a lot of people know, of course, about recycling. And there's the, the saying, the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Well, one, one thing that a repair cafe serves to do is to ensure that we're not throwing out as much stuff. Like when we break something, um, it, it, rather than replacing it, a repair cafe is focused on using it so that we're not um, producing more new things, throwing out more new things, and just creating more waste overall. The next solution example I'll mention is uh, a fun one. Like I, I, I have a lot of friends who love biking and um, this is an example of um, a bike share. So essentially um, bike sharing is an opportunity for people to use, um, use community bikes. Here in Washington, DC, we have them all over the place um, where you could either like, swipe a card or basically rent a bike temporarily to get around. And not only is that healthier for the environment than cars, which, um, which are burning the like burning fuel, which is not great for the atmosphere, but also um, it is a great way to build community and meet other people, as you can see in this photo. Um, another example I'll mention quickly um, with buildings is making buildings more um, environmentally friendly and sustainable. Um, and that's this example here. Um, but the one that I want to just spend a minute with is health and education. Because when you think of health and education, you might be wondering, well, how do health and education decrease, um, de uh, decrease the harmful effects of climate change? And essentially, it's more indirect. Um, but, but one thing that we found is that when you support communities' health, when you make sure that they have access to high quality education, that these are things that um, ensure that people have rights, ensure that people have equality, um, and that ensure that um, they're able to live healthier healthier lives. Because at the end of the day, climate change is not just about our planet's health, but it's also about our health. And I think when we talk about emissions in the atmosphere and, and different, um, different pollutants and pollution in the atmosphere, like that is, um, that's one of the most direct ways to see how health affects climate change. So um, as I kind of get to the end of this, this presentation and, and get ready for your questions, um, I think we're all probably wondering how can we forward these solutions to reach drawdown? Um, and the answer is that like, climate solutions are, are amazing, but um, we also have the power to use what we call 
um, this fancy word accelerators at Project Drawdown. So basically what these mean is that um, accelerators, they, they work at different scale, they work at different scales and different levels. So like as an individual, you could um, keep these things in mind, um, but like companies and large groups and, and uh, countries could really keep these in mind. And, you know, when we, when we think of climate solutions, it, they, you know, they not only help us to do these things, so to change behavior, to um, build power with other people, but um, by like pushing people to change behavior, by improving technology, we're also supporting climate solutions. So I'm, I'm happy to talk more about that if there are questions. So what, what Project Drawdown is doing to reach Drawdown currently, we are doing a lot of research um, and that's the main focus of our work. We're also working with different companies to like help them to explore how they can make a big impact when it comes to climate change. But the big thing that, that um, I'm doing is really focused on having conversations like this with you, with everyone at Kells, with folks at Kells Academy and otherwise, um, because I think what's so important is to know that each and every one of us has a role to play and, and can make a difference when it comes to climate change and global warming. So if there's one message I want to really leave you with, it's that you can be a climate person, you can make a difference, you don't need to wait until you have a climate career. I think often it's as simple as starting with thinking about just the decisions that you make, thinking about your school and your community and the groups you're part of and um, thinking about how those things could be better for the planet um, because those small, like the small changes actually do make a big difference in the world and um, you could be part of that change. You're not too young to be part of the change. You're not too young to make an impact. And um, I'm excited to, to hear your questions now to um, just to learn more about what's on your minds. All right, so what were some of your first obstacles when you started your work? Um, some of the obstacles when I started my work are, there, well, I would say there are always a lot of different types of obstacles, but I think one of the obstacles, thinking about storytelling more, more generally, is that um, like people, I think people are just so busy sometimes especially in today's world, like we have our phones on us constantly and it's so hard to keep our attention. So one of the obstacles is just finding ways to tell stories in ways that people actually care about and pay attention to um, because it's not, you know, it, I, not everyone will be able to sit and like listen to a presentation and have, not everyone has a lot of time to listen. So number one, I would say is just people short, shorter attention spans is one thing, um, but it's fun to get creative. And then in terms of climate, one of the obstacles I think is where we started with the question, a lot of people don't think of climate solutions. And so um, I think that's an obstacle, but I also see that as an opportunity for more people to um, know that they can make a difference and know that they have power to do something when it comes to climate. It's a great question. Hello, Max Bob. I would Hi. like to ask you a couple questions about what do you think about electric cars in the future? Because some companies are trying to make all their cars electrical. I love that um, electric cars are just making um, it a lot more sustainable and, and healthy for the planet. So we don't need to burn gases um, to get around. So I, I, I think it's great. And a lot of companies have, um, you know, at least have an electric car or a couple of electric cars so far, which is great. But I am excited for the day that um, a lot more of them have electric cars or that they have all electric cars because that will definitely make a big difference when it comes to the pollutants in the atmosphere. So I'm a, I'm a fan. I, I don't have a car personally in Washington, DC because it's so, um, especially before the pandemic, it's so easy to get around and it's a very walkable city too. So, um, but I, I do think that, um, yeah, I thought when, the day that I get a car, I was thinking about this last week, it will, it will be an electric car. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, what is my favorite part of my job? So um, my 
My favorite part is that I think in, in doing storytelling, especially like I'm very just thankful to be able to meet people in the community and to meet people um, just to hear from different people. So like even hearing your questions and talking with you now is so powerful because I realize like not everyone has the opportunity to just hear different perspectives, hear questions and ideas from different people. And I love that part of my job because um, when we just like stop and listen to each other, it is a great reminder of like everyone has something valuable to share. I, I remember when I was in the seventh grade, especially in class, not so much outside of class, but in class, especially I was just like, I would be, I was a lot more quiet than I am now. And it wasn't because I didn't have anything to say or didn't have anything to think. I, that was just the way I was. But um, now I kind of realize like, you know, while people didn't necessarily, like adults didn't necessarily ask for my opinions on things all the time or ask me to help with things all the time, um, you know, it, I still had something valuable to contribute. So I like to help people see that they can make a difference in the world. And I like to help people see that, um, yeah, I, I like connecting with people to see how they're making a difference too. So that, that's the favorite, my favorite part of my job. Thank you. And that's a great question for, from whoever asked it. If things don't change, do you think, um... Um, people will still be on this earth by um, 2043? It's interesting because I think, so yes, I think we'll still be here. I think that things, the good news is that things are already like actively changing. I think it's how much could we change to make sure that um, like that we're not experiencing the negative effects as much as we might. So looking at like wildfires and the surge in them in, in recent years in different places is like one example of how we're slightly seeing, you know, some of the changes, um, the negative changes. And I think rather than it being like, boom, like something happens in uh, 2040 or 2050, um, especially that's really bad. I think it's just going to be gradual changes that we see. So that's one reason I'm really um, passionate about climate solutions so that we could make sure that we don't get to that point. And I'm, I'm so glad that like a lot more countries and companies are, are taking it seriously. Awesome, thank you. And um, the... I'll, the question in the chat now is um, which cities do you target, like which cities do I focus on specifically? So I actually, my project drawdown is global organization and actually um, the, the work I previously did on the NASA space app challenge was also global. So there's not a focus when it comes to, um, yeah, there's not really a focus when it comes to um, which cities specifically, which is one reason that we're having this conversation now, which is great. In my opinion on nuclear, and that's a, that's a very specific, I don't think about nuclear energy specifically a lot in my work to tell you the truth, because um, when it comes to, I think overall beyond like any sp specific kind of energy that is not uh, not helpful for the planet or dangerous for the planet. Um, I am very much in favor of like um, types of energy that are like more uh, natural based on the planet. So like I talked about solar energy as an example, there's hydro energy, hydro powering things, so water. So I am more in favor of clean types of energy that are more um, healthy for the planet and, and not as harmful. What was something you found out through your work that blew your mind? Oh, what was the last, I, I didn't hear the last part of that. What was something you found out through your work that blew your mind? A lot of things, a lot of things. Uh, I So just to repeat the question, just so everyone could hear, um, what was something that I found out through my work that blew my mind? And I think every day kind of, I'm, I'm learning different things that blow my mind. Not really when it comes to uh, climate. Well, okay, I'll give you like two things. So one, when it comes to climate change, the one that kind of opened my eyes a lot is that 
like, yes, it's so important that we um, recycle. It's so important that we do things within our lives that um, like reduce the waste and reduce, um, you know, just reduce the negative effect that we're having. But at the same time, um, it, it's also really important to think about like companies and um, governments and, you know, your town, but also your country and, and a province and all of that, because when it comes to um, when it comes to climate change, they have such a big impact. We were talking about electric cars earlier and automakers, and they have such a big impact that I think while it's so while our own actions are so important, it's also so important to remember like let's use our voices really and our 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 voices especially to get uh, companies and countries and cities to make changes that we need um, because it's one thing for one person to change their behavior but it's so much more powerful when like a classroom or a school or a city or you know a bigger group than that does something because that will really help us change things and and make sure that we're on a better path by 20 you know well over the the next years not putting a, a deadline on it and then the only other thing that i would say that's blown my mind is that when it comes to storytelling and people sometimes we um we don't even realize again how amazing people are and how much they have to contribute we don't realize how amazing we are so I would just say that that's the thing that's blown my mind that every single person has a story every single person like has the complicated thoughts that we all each of us have and like the, the struggles, but also the dreams and, and so that's one thing that kind of has it blows my mind every single day, basically when I connect with people. Um, and uh, th for, thank you for that question. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll just quickly mention um, this last question in the chat. So I mentioned, so in in school, um, I, what I studied, I studied business and I studied marketing. The question in the chat here is, um, what did you study in school to do your job? What was your career path? But honestly, um, I think the biggest thing that I did that got me onto the path to doing what I'm doing now is that I just focused on what I'm passionate about, what I care about, and I would encourage all of you to really do that, to think about what you're passionate about, like what you care about, what you're good at, and what you want to do. And those are the things that you could focus on. You don't need to study business. You don't need to study marketing. You don't need to follow my path to make a difference when it comes to climate and to, to making um, a difference in your, your own way. And so, um, yeah, I would just mention if you want to learn more about Project Drawdown and all we're doing, um, you could go to drawdown.org to, to see more about just different solutions and start to think of your path. But um, thank you everyone for having me today. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great day and take care. Thank you, Abuzas, for listening to this interview. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can hear about upcoming sessions with other change makers.